Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. This morning, um, I'm going to tear into something that I don't, had kind of been not looking forward to. I'm going to take the radiator out of the car. The reason why I haven't been looking forward to it, and it should be a somewhat simple job, uh, is that it makes the car, um, well, it, I just got it running and you can't start it. You can't do anything with it with the radiator out. So uh, it's going to stall a little bit of the progress on the mechanical for a bit, but we're going to get that done. I've got the lift to help me with that now, uh, which will be good. Also, the other day I went out and I bought, yes, some cheap rubber floor mats because I don't want the original carpeting to get all um, nasty and gross. And I actually took the floor mats to the car wash and washed them all off. They came out nice. I bought some shampoo, woo shampoo, so I could clean the um, rest of the carpeting in the interior of the car. But uh, I'm gonna worry about that um, later on. First things first, I gotta get the car up in the air and start uh, getting the fluid drained out of it. First things first, I'm gonna take the rad cap off and set that aside so I can get some airflow. It's actually full and the antifreeze looks good. That's a good sign. If it was empty or rusty looking, that would be bad. But um, you might be asking yourself, Alex, if the radiator appears to be holding fluid, why are you taking it out? Well, it has a pretty massive puncture right through the uh, core on the other side. And um, although I cleaned it up, it looked like it had been seeping around both corners. So I'm gonna at very least get it uh, tested and make sure there's nothing uh, too terribly awry with it. So with the cap off, that should allow some airflow to uh, make it a little bit easier, kind of like when you're dumping a bottle upside down or emptying a gas can, you gotta let that little vent out. So let's get her up in the air and uh, get the fluid out of it. Pretty simple operation. Green button makes it go up. Just realized something, I should probably put that hood down so it doesn't, you know, crunch into my ceiling. <laughs> That could have been a little more excitement than I wanted this morning. <laughs> and I'm gonna get her up in the air now. Um, and it goes up pretty high. This lift is pretty decent. Um, and, it, and part of the reason why I built the garage with the ceiling so high was for this very purpose. I'm actually using my garage for what it's supposed to be doing. Well, that should do it. Get underneath here. And it's got all these little drip drip trays just in case you want to park a car underneath it. Let me get my light on. Okay, there's the light. All right, see so we've got a little bit of blue discoloration, possibly some cracking happening there. There's my tap. It looks like at some point somebody's put a, uh, maybe replaced the uh, temperature sensor on the radiator, which is fine. Uh, but what I want to do is get uh, my pan up here so that I can catch everything that's going to come pouring out of that. And I'm going to have to move this uh, jacking tray. This is a tray you can actually put a jack on. Um, and get uh, underneath there, get a drip pan under there and collect all the spoils. You will antifreeze. I'm just sort of letting it out at a trickle right now, uh, just so I don't <laughs> have like a waterfall under here. I'm gonna fill up this tray, then I'm gonna fill up that one. Hopefully that should be all that's in there. If there's any more, well, I'll transfer containers and keep going. It's so weird, it's flowing at such a consistent rate, it looks like a, like a piece of glass. Look at that, you can't even see it moving. <laughs> Like, like a green glass sculpture connecting, but I assure you, that's liquid coming out of there. Anyway, that was so weird <laughs> that it looked frozen in time. Anyway, I filled up almost an entire jug, I'll show you. Look at this. This car holds, I've almost filled up this giant water bottle full of antifreeze. That is a lot of antifreeze, and it doesn't look bad. Um, that said, I'm not going to risk reusing it and putting it back through. 
Uh, I'm putting it in this container so I can take it safely to the eco station and they can dispose of it properly. Um, and I'm not using my, uh, you probably saw that I have one of those oil drain catches over there. Well, that's for oil. I'm not gonna use it for antifreeze. Um, I'm filling that up with oil so I can do the same thing. Fill it up, get it drained out at an eco station and keep on using it. But I'm gonna check on this. It sounds like we're kind of near the end. Getting close to it. Yep. It's got the uh, constricted trickle. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna get that capped off and uh, see what we gotta work with here. Oh my gosh, the radiator is out. It was a little bit of a tight fit getting it out of there, but uh, it's out. So I can get that into the shop, get them to check it over, clean everything up, make sure it uh, doesn't have any leaks. And uh, the reason for all this effort, like I said, I don't want this 12 cylinder engine overheating on me. It's a lot less expensive to get the rad fixed and make sure the cooling is proper before you start revving the heck out of an old 12 cylinder engine. Um, also, while it's out, it'll give me a chance to uh, tinker on the horns a bit. They do have uh, air horns. You can kind of see them right there. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't play like, uh, you know, wish I wasn't Dixie or anything like that, as far as I know. Uh, the compressor for the air horns is right over there. Uh, I guess it's pretty common for them to wear out. So this will give me a chance to unbolt that thing and see what the heck's going on. Well, I just dropped off the radiator at the rad shop. Um, so hopefully they'll get that uh, put back together. I feel like all these parts, the bumper, the upholstery, the radiator, everything's gonna be coming back in the next four to five weeks, roughly. Hopefully something's a little bit sooner, but um, that'll give me an opportunity to kind of get some of the other mechanical sorted out, get the interior cleaned up, and uh, hopefully have this thing done. I really wanna get the majority of it done before spring because um, you don't want to have a car you want to drive in summer in your shop in summer because that would really suck and that's happened uh, plenty of times before <laughs> Ooh, there's all sorts of junkyards around here okay keep focus Alex keep focus started cleaning the interior of the car and um, I was gonna crawl down and get on my knees like I normally do then I remembered I have a stand a lift and the car goes up I am at standing height right now and I'm cleaning and getting things all taken care of in the car without having to bust my back. Boy, do I feel spoiled, but this lift is definitely coming in handy, not gonna lie. With the rat out at the shop and um, things more accessible. Oh, look, I look like I have Mickey Mouse hands. <laughs> I'm wearing these rubber gloves because, um, well, I don't wanna get dirty. And plus, uh, wrenching on things gives me an extra layer of protection. Um, with my Mickey Mouse glove, <laughs> the point to my problem, these little reflectors, somebody at some point, see how they're angled? See how they're angled like that? That's so that they actually go on the other side and it, so it's flat. So the person behind you driving actually has a clear view. Whoever painted this car last put these things on the wrong side and I'm gonna fix it. Probably seems like a small thing, but to me it makes a difference that those are sitting the way they're meant to sit. So that's all fixed up. I can put the car up in the air. <laughs> Never stick your finger up when you're wearing a rubber glove. It looks like you're about to get your prostate examined. Um, I'm gonna put the car up in the air <laughs> and uh, have a look at the horn situation. Okay, I've got this lowered down. I can see other people have probably been wrenching through here and that's likely wrench marks. I'll have to touch that paint up after, but for now, um, I've discovered that the ground wire is actually uh, broken and disconnected from the horn um, compressor for the air horns. So I'm gonna start with the, the most simple thing ever. I'm gonna try and reattach that back to the ground and try it and see if that does the trick. Let's hope so. So here I was expecting to have a big repair bill because that compressor is expensive, but checking the ground wire and look. Well, that's not going to get annoying for <clears throat> my kids inside the house, but that is one major thing fixed that a vehicle requires to be a vehicle on the road. You got to have a working horn, you got to have signal lights, brakes. Um, I'm going to have to start thinking about tackling that clutch pretty soon, but um, mm, 
my friend is going to come over and help me with that. So I'm going to hold off because that might be a two person job getting that done. But for the time being, look what I did. <laughs> well, with the ground wire fixed, um, I can try and tackle that. You always worry when somebody has used duct tape in place of electrical tape. That appears to be the only spot on the car so far I found that. That's a pretty cheesy fix. Um, so I've got my proper electrical tape here. I'm gonna take that off and um, get that taped up properly. I have brought my giant jug of antifreeze, it's behind me, to the eco station. I'm just waiting in line right now for them to put us through and I will drop it off where they'll responsibly recycle it and, uh, and take care of it. You don't wanna put those kind of chemicals down a drain. Um, definitely not great for the environment. And um, I guess in some cases you can filter it and uh, maybe put it back in the vehicle. But uh, since it didn't look terrible, um, but I don't wanna risk that when it's an expensive car. So uh, we're gonna drop this off and then uh, I think I found out what was wrong with the brakes on it. And I think that's gonna be what I deal with next. Few things that I'm gonna tackle under the car today. Let's see if I can get a light on here. There we go. Um, one is I'm going to replace the components of the clutch. Um, that is the clutch slave. I've got the bolts off. I'm going to get that off. The uh, high pressure line that was on there was cracking. I actually just cut it to get the end off so it'd be easier to remove. But I'm going to get a new line and a new clutch master cylinder as well. We're starting underneath here. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to replace all these systems is that frankly, they were completely gunked up with black sludgy. You can kind of see it on there. That's supposed to be clear, crystal clear, not like dark, muddy chocolate milk. Anyway, we're gonna see if we can get this guy off and then work our way up through the system and hopefully figure out what's going on with the clutch here. Okay, well, clutch parts are off. When I actually took the um, uh, slave cylinder off, dust came out of it, which is not a great sign. When I took the hydraulic hose off, which I was able to find a new one online, um, black sludge came out. And uh, you can see from the end here, this was leaking pretty bad. This is the, the clutch master cylinder. So the whole thing was bad. Um, this totem pole uh, bottle opener did not come out of there. <laughs> Just happens to be sitting in frame. Uh, but new parts are on their way. The only thing that I couldn't get or they couldn't find was this uh, steel uh, hydraulic line. So I'm gonna have to take the uh, bits into a uh, custom manufacturer and see if they can make one locally here. Usually they can do that. It's just, you know, you can get, probably, probably get it as flexible and get new ends on it. But all that stuff was gross and worn out. And uh, now it's off the car. And I'm optimistic that with a bunch of new parts, that clutch will work again. Okay, so here is where I'm at at the end of this episode. The interior is coming together nice, it's cleaning up well, the ignition switch is taken apart, the bumpers are off, the hydraulic clutch system is taken apart. Um, I have really kind of, at this stage right now, I have really made a mess of the car. <laughs> I've just dismantled all sorts of things all over the place. But um, that's as I'm kind of going through and finding out what's wrong with it. So very soon, I'll be able to get this thing um, as the parts arrive in the mail and things start to show up, I can start putting stuff back together and start making it into a car. But I'd say as of today, this is the most dismantled. Oh, and the radiator's out. This is the most dismantled that the car hopefully will be in my ownership. That's the goal. I guess we'll see if that comes true or not. But it is dire straits right now because I can't start it, I can't run it, I can't move it. Um, it doesn't stop. Well, actually, that's the only thing it does. It has brakes. <laughs> um, so lots more work to be done. But guys, this is the sort of the messy stage, but prepare for the parts to come in because next episode, I'm sure stuff will start to show up and we'll start to get things reassembled and start inching our way towards this being a proper car again. So thanks very much for watching today's episode, guys. We'll see you all soon. Subscribe if you haven't already because we do not only you know, car stuff, but look for antiques and treasures and go on adventures. Um, so join us on our channel. Love to have you with us and uh, we'll see how this car turns out. So thanks again for watching today's episode. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.